It's very important because the judicial system is a system that's available for those who otherwise would have no redress in the society. The son of Pennsylvania's first black congressman, Robert Nix Jr., took no time in distinguishing himself as an achiever. Honors graduate at Villanova, top of his class at Penn Law, he was reputed to be one of the best trial lawyers in America. As a judge of the Court of Common Pleas, he had a reputation of making the tough decisions, facing difficult issues in difficult times. The seizure of Cook United Methodist Church by activists put him in the national spotlight. Common Pleas Court Judge Nix goes on the record supporting the concerns of the protesters. But he notes, one cannot intimidate and extort from those with whom one disagrees. Uh, it is a matter of attempting to be uh, persuasive in dissent. But the, the basis for my optimism is that it can be done within that system. When he won his bid for a seat on the state Supreme Court, he became the first black in Pennsylvania history to hold statewide office. Elected again in a landslide, Robert Nix will probably have a dramatic effect on this court. At 55 years of age, he could serve as Chief Justice for 15 years, the longest term in the century. As I sat behind the bench, viewed the audience, I saw many young faces. And I trust that an event such as this will inspire them to know that they can be whatever they want to be, provided. <laughs> provided they're willing to give the effort and make the sacrifice necessary to accomplish that objective. Nix has assumed an active role as Chief Justice. He was the first Chief Justice to address the legislature. His calls for judicial reforms are aimed at building public confidence in a judicial system much in need of repair. Is a careful observer of the admonition of the Old Testament prophet Micah to seek truth, to do justice, and to walk humbly with his God. He is, in the words of the Beatitudes, one who hungers and thirsts after justice. And ever, Mr. Now, I uh, am a firm believer that uh, you have to get your, your strength from your own God, and everybody has their own God, and uh, I hopefully have a fairly good relationship with mine. At least I bother him, him enough to, <laughs> for him to know me. He is a hard, hard worker. When he was a lawyer, he gave his all to a case. I mean, he would sit up all night getting his charge to the jury or his witnesses, the questions lined up. I mean, he really gave it his all. And when he went to the common police court, I think that he really put everything he had into it. Um, wanting to be fair. Um, and he, he's done the same thing with this court. Um, I think as, as the boys watched him work, it gave them a sense of putting everything you have into what you do. The worst decision he ever made it's when he bought that yellow Eldorado. It was the ugliest car I've ever seen. It was a family outing. The whole family was going to the World Series. We got there. Dad said, the seats are up there. I'll see you guys later. And off he went to the mayor's box. And we sat up there. It was a cold game. And we were side by side watching the game, looking down at the mayor's box, <laughs> trying to find him. This interview doesn't seem to be helping my image. <laughs> yeah, not at all. If you work a long hour, 10, 11 hour days, and you come home tired, there's, there, you don't get any sympathy because everybody, it's, it's been done so often that it's, it's not really a big deal. It's, it's almost expected. I feel a real 
responsibility to, to, do, to do things to start my brothers off. I'm the one uh, who happened to get in the legal profession, so I, I get the greatest benefits. My grandfather is, uh, I guess, the epitome of the old warrior. Uh, very set in his ways, and uh, um, very accomplished in this way. I think, uh, and to that extent, he likes to just talk about what I'm doing now, what I want to do, and he, he's more like, more like, like uh, just plain advice. He was always very careful uh, to suggest that I be everything but a lawyer. And I think he did that knowing that had he taken the opposite course, I probably would not have responded by being a lawyer. When did you know you wanted to become a lawyer? <laughs> well, I started off, I think I wanted to be a garbage man. That was my first uh, ambition. No, that's very serious, eh? And, uh, I, uh, one day my mother pointed out to me that garbage men have the obligation of disposing of dead cats. So that was the end of being a garbage man. Then the next career that I wanted to pursue was that of being a detective. And uh, I was very impressed with that and somehow I moved over to being a lawyer. I can't really identify at what point of my life that that transition took place. You're obviously very dedicated to our system of government. And in 1968, when Martin Luther King was murdered, you were quoted as saying, the Negro community is eagerly awaiting to see whether the eulogies of Tuesday will result in affirmative action in the days to come. They look to state and local governments to find a new dedication to the rights of all men. If these events do not occur swiftly and without procrastination, Dr. King's principles and beliefs in nonviolence will be as dead as his earthly body. Was this, at, the po at this point in your career, a question of the very system that you had stood for? Because I believe in the system doesn't mean that I am satisfied with everything that has happened. I was always of the view, somehow, and at some time things would get better, but I also knew that you had to express your disagreement as King advocated, and you had to uh, push for change. And uh, even though many changes have been made, there are many things that are still not true. We don't, uh, are not perfect. We do not have an egalitarian society at this time. We're much closer to it than we were, but we're still long way off in many aspects and many regards. We need always to remember that no stone should ever be rejected merely because it is a stone that sprang from the wastes of Western Europe or it is a black stone that came from the wonderful motherland of faraway Africa. But let no stone ever be despised and rejected of men, not esteemed by men, because of the color of its skin or the language of its forebears or the situation in economic circumstance from which it comes. Let us always remember that of one blood has God made all of us to dwell together and to be useful in this place. There was evidence that the protest was being recognized, that dissent could be effective in bringing about change, and in fact it did. I think uh, probably the 60s should be considered uh, the third significant uh, revolution in this country. The first being, of course, the original revolution that, uh, uh, which uh, was the beginning of the country, but it broke away from England. The second being the industrial revolution, which changed the whole complexion of our economy. And the third is what I call the social revolution of the 60s, which changed the social structure of our, our country.
Yes, I know my grandfather quite well. Uh, he was born, I think, right after the Civil War. Uh, the slaves had been emancipated at that time. I think uh, the interesting thing was his wife was the one who encouraged him to go back and go to school, schooling. He received his degrees after he was married. He did uh, go on to get his doctorate of divinity and also a doctorate uh, of mathematics. And he taught uh, as the dean of uh, academics at uh, South Carolina School, uh, State College from, I am told, from the day it opened until he died some 40 years later. Well, for me, you have a lot of time at home when you are without your husband. You have a husband that is uh, at dinners and has meetings and you have a husband that comes home that's tired and often isn't, doesn't have the time or the interest to sit down and talk. Then you have the time when you have to catch up on all these things and tell him all of your little problems and try to get them all in in an afternoon or something. And you wait for his great, quote, quote, wisdom. And then you end up making the decisions and doing it all yourself anyhow, which you've already done but you don't want him to feel left out. No, she has been a real force in my life and a very supportive person. And I have been now married uh, 30 years now. I've been uh, a real delight to me. Been <laughs> they hopped in the car, and I said, let me see your report card, you know, and I got Bob's. And Michael said, wait a minute. <laughs> he was looking at this, and he said, mm. This is worse than I thought. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> See, when we were young, uh, we didn't have two protests. As, as Tony and Steve came up, they, they became more vocal. Especially Steve. He's the one that, that really well, he was He is still player. protesting. <laughs> if you say yes, he says no. If you say day, he says night. For whatever reason, he will agree to nothing. <laughs> and he will continue his argument for hours. <laughs> and days. And weeks. I, I'm happy to say that the country that we love is in the difficult process of maturing. And in the very few years that uh, I have been on this planet, I have seen just so many changes uh, that... Uh, have just transformed uh, our perspective, have uh, elevated our opportunity level beyond the imagination of people born no more than 70 years ago. There is no way that uh, uh, future generations will really know the depth and difficulties that uh, beset the earlier veterans like uh, like the congressman and his contemporaries, who were somewhat before me, uh, in trying to make it as a lawyer and as a, uh, uh, a member of a very proud black community. There's no way that they can know that. Uh, so much of our history is unwritten and uh, unrealized. And I think that uh, truly they miss something, the younger generation, although they have opportunities that we would never, never have dreamed of. I think the thing that's more important is that you see that there is continuous progress. Because I think it would be very dull existence if everything was right. In fact, I'd be out of job if there was no disagreement in this world, would I? Uh -uh.